Hi everyone, it's Vesper. Welcome back to part three of the series of videos that I'm making prior to starting tea. This video is brought to you by my apartment and pajamas because I don't feel like putting on actual people clothes until I absolutely have to leave the apartment, which will be in an hour when I have to take Calcifer to the vet to get snip snip. I'm sorry, Calcifer. And when I have to go to Starbucks to edit this video because I can't get jack shit done in this apartment. Today's video will be a bit different than the video that I said I would make in my previous videos in that this video is going to be a story time. So grab some coffee or tea, grab some cookies, have a snack with me, and let's get started. So this past April 2017, I changed jobs. I moved from relatively countryside Japan to a metropolis, to a major, major city. And I also moved from a very small family-owned English conversation school to a conglomerate, a really large company that owns many schools across Japan. And when I was applying for jobs, I did so in such a way as to not be as closeted, I guess you could say, as I had been previously from the start. I wanted to take steps so that I could use Vesper at this new job, even though it's still not legally my name because I can't change my name right now. And I took other steps in regards to personal expression, presentation, and stuff like that. The way that I applied for jobs was risky, especially in this conservative country. It was risky, but it paid off because I started this new job from the start with everyone referring to me as Vesper. They only know me as Vesper. The only people who know my legal name really are the people who see my documents and they, during the interview process, never asked why I preferred a different name. So this whole situation that I'm in from the start, the fact that my name was not questioned and neither was my presentation which was very th like three-piece suit except not fancy suit but you know three-piece suit and all that stuff stuff that in Japan would not generally fly at an interview especially at an interview but they didn't ask any questions they just accepted it and everything's going well in that regard and the fact that things went so smoothly kind of alerted me to the fact that maybe this school had some kind of LGBT policy. Maybe one of my superiors, specifically the Aussie bloke who works in Tokyo, kind of assumed maybe that something was going on there, maybe trans related, but he never said anything, has still not said anything to this day, and I'm just going with it. So fast forward back to April when the hiring process is finished. I'm finally at the campus that I'm going to be teaching at, and I meet my coworkers, two of whom whom are fellow Americans. But this story really is about the relationship that I've had with one coworker who I'm gonna name Kay from here on out. As soon as I arrived at that school, pretty much like day one or day two, I asked Kay if she knew of any LGBT policy that was in place at the school. And immediately she ruffles through her desk, the papers on her desk, and pulls out this paper that she says had been given to all the staff in the previous school year Year, but that was still relatively recently, about how to handle students coming out to teachers or handle bullying that might be related to sexuality and gender. Calcifer is trying to eat my cookies and drink my coffee because he is such a human. Aren't you? Anyways, that was really surprising and encouraging because it's really not common for schools in Japan to have any kind of policy in regards to LGBT students. And even though I want to be like really happy about the fact that the school had this policy in place, and I am, I am happy, but over the past eight years I have observed this policy being implemented or attempts at it, and I have to say, having a policy on paper and vague awareness of it among staff isn't the solution because there are still problems. And even though I'm really happy that the school has this policy in place, I decided early on, you know, just to keep my head down and just feel things out and observe, which I've been doing. And I could tell you lots of other stories about conversations that I've overheard amongst teachers and students and stuff regarding LGBT related things, but that's another story time, not today. Anyway, here I am 
at this school company that has some awareness of LGBT people, but I found myself in this awkward position of not being entirely sure how this awareness and policy towards students could potentially relate to me if I were to come out. But anyways, back to Kay, my co-worker, senior co-worker. She is older than me by nearly 10 years and likes to remind me of that. From the start, it was obvious that Kay had pegged me as some kind of queer. I don't know if it's entirely because I asked about LGBT policy. I think maybe that may have clued her in on things initially, but increasingly throughout the school year, she has not been at all subtle about trying to let me know in that very cis head ally way that she is LGBT friendly and an ally. And by that, I mean she randomly brings up how her BFF is trans and how she's gone to gay clubs and how she has a lesbian friend, blah, blah, blah. Totally random shit where she's like using her friends as tokens to try and make me feel more comfortable around her. Even straight up ass me if I had been to Nichome, the gay, I would say LGBT, but it's really mostly gay district in Tokyo. And she was like, yeah, me and my girlfriends went there one night. It was a hoot. But anyways, that gives you a basic picture of K. She assumes things about me and does not hide those assumptions at all. Even though I have not actually at any point came out to her whatsoever about anything. I had gone into this new job promising myself to not make any effort whatsoever to stay in the closet because I am tired at this point in my life. It is more trouble to stay in the closet than it is to just come out. So I admit to having played a hand in her ramping up of her waving of the ally flag throughout the year because I increasingly played into the things that she said or not played into but totally replied to in a way that affirmed what her assumptions may have been. For example, when she asked me about Nicho I would be like, yeah, I go to Nichome sometimes. How do you know about Nichome? Or when she talked to me about her trans BFF, I would reply with information that your average person does not know about being trans. But at no point did I ever actually come out to her or explicitly say what I am or am not. I just let her imagination run away with her, I guess, and kind of fed it until this past Tuesday. If you've watched either of my most recent two videos, then you might know that I I have been intending to come out to my superiors. I have a lot of superiors actually, but I was thinking of two in particular. I have not come out to those two yet, but preemptively I came out to Kay. So this past Tuesday, I took Kay aside into a separate room, closed the door, sat her down, and told her that I needed to come out to her about something. And before I could say the something, she was like, and water is wet. And then I was like, no, but I don't think you understand. And again, before I could even finish, she was like, like, I already know, but I was like, no, really, I don't think you know. I'm not a woman, neither am I a man. And the look on her face when I said that, and I said that I am going to start taking testosterone, that snug look on her face, her jaw dropped to the floor like it was fucking Looney Tunes. It was a fucking Kodak moment. I wish I had a camera because I will never let her live that down. I told her in the most simplest of terms that there are more than two genders and that I was neither of the two binary genders and that that's called being non-binary or in Japan ex gender and she sat there quietly and took it all in and her reaction wasn't bad but it was really hard to gauge her reaction because she has what I call a resting bitch face and I know it's really bad to use that kind of terminology but if she knows I refer to her face this way we may, we have inside jokes about it but yeah it was hard to read her reaction because of her lack of clear facial expressions or commentary, but I think she took it pretty well. Anyway, she was supportive of me doing that, and I asked her if she thought that I should come out to the two superiors that I had in mind because we will soon have recontracting interviews, each of us, all of us, with these superiors, and that could be my chance to come out to them. And she recommended that I don't come out to them, not because they would have any issue with it. She thinks they wouldn't care 
care or that at least they shouldn't care as long as I am able to perform my job. She recommended that I not come out to them because this is where she laid a huge knowledge bomb, information bomb on me about things that are upcoming in the company in particular my campus, my school. Now isn't probably the best time to bring up that because A, it doesn't matter, B, it doesn't matter, and C, just focus on getting the job done because of other things that are upcoming coming. And it doesn't matter is her wording. She feels like it doesn't matter because yeah, ally flag, woo! And I don't know for sure that it doesn't matter to the superiors, but I'm guessing based on the whole interview and hiring process that even if it did matter to them personally, they're not allowed to make it matter. So having received all of that advice and knowledge, I decided that I won't come out to them or to anyone else at the school. I'm just going to start taking tea. And like she said, I should just do my thing and go about my life and and if people start noticing things, what the fuck ever. And I'm all for that, what the fuck ever. That is my attitude towards things. I just wanted, I guess, some kind of closure or like more secure job security. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, I think that is going to be my approach going forward to just do my thing and what the fuck ever to everyone else. But that is not the real point of this story. The real point of this story is that no one has ever pegged me as queer before especially not someone who isn't queer themselves. So that was a first for me, dealing with this coworker who was so adamant expressing that she knows about me without me actually telling her anything. And that was really, yeah. Because on one hand, I actually do want to be visibly queer. And I know that it's kind of fucked up for me to admit that and say that openly because there are people who are visually queer who hate the fact that they are visually queer because they are bullied and receive all kinds of shit for it. But yeah, this is just my first experience dealing with being pegged as queer by someone who's not queer themselves. And it was really interesting because it brought home the fact that being read as visibly queer really is just synonymous most of the time with being read as visibly gay. Because, you know, people, when they see any kind of nonconformity or deviance from the norm, their first thought is gay. Not bi, not trans, not asexual, not anything else. They just assume that you are gay. And I'm pretty sure that Kay assumed that I was a lesbian because of how she reacted when I did not mention anything about sexuality at all. He was completely dumbfounded because obviously that was the last thing she expected despite whatever hints I had laid for her along the way to figure it out. And I think that's really interesting how even within the LGBT community, being visibly queer is often used as meaning being visibly gay, specifically gay. Don't I don't see people using visibly queer to refer to trans or non-binary experiences or bi experiences. Although I have come across the term visibly trans at times, is often used towards just trans women or trans feminine people, which I am not. And so I kind of have feels about the term visibly trans too, because it seems like a very open umbrella term when it's always inevitably used in a specific way to refer to specific people rather than all the people that that term could potentially encompass. And I don't know, that's just something that is interesting to me right now that I'm pondering because I do not want to take tea and then be perceived as a cis guy. I don't want to be perceived as a guy, period. I don't want to be perceived as a girl either. So I guess, in a sense, what you could refer to that as is wanting to be visibly not non-binary, genderqueer, trans, but what does that even fucking mean? It means nothing. I take issue with all of the visibly blah 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 terminology in the LGBT community, actually. Controversial opinion. Fuck does it mean to be visibly something? It means to visibly fit stereotypes about something, but that something is always a much narrower something than is the reality for anyone. 
one. And I don't know. I don't know. This is something that I'm thinking about because going forward and taking tea, how people read me is very much going to be dependent on visuals, visual cues, assumptions, assumptions based on visual stuff, stereotypes, taking tea. Is that going to make me more visibly queer or is it going to result in me just being read as cis male instead of cis female. That That is the thing that stresses me out about tea because I, I don't want to be assumed to be male at all, but yeah. So I'm going to end this long story time video here and wake up Calcifer because he needs to eat his food before going to the vet. And yeah, I have a lot to think about this vacation, vacation, going back to America for about 10 days. I will not be posting videos on YouTube until probably mid January. And at that time, it's probably going to be me starting tea. But between now and then, a lot of introspection and journaling and stuff. Expect a lot of new videos in 2018 for sure. But anyways, I hope you guys have a happy holidays, safe New Year's, and I'll see you in 2018. Bye. It's now been two days since I shot this video. Yeah, it's late being uploaded. But Calcifer has gotten his snip snip and is back home safe and sound.